We're going to look at an ozone generator today. This is a device that generates ozone gas and is used to purify vegetables and fruits and stuff before you, you cook with them. You put your uh, vegetables and so forth in a, um, in a sink with water and run the ozone gas through it. It's supposed to kill bacteria. Anyway, this one's not working. A buddy of mine brought it to me. He says if you give it a smack, it starts up. So it sounds like a bad connection. Let's check it out. I have a question today before I start today's show, and this regards SD cards and what the heck the problem is. Do I just beep? Um, as you know, I've been having trouble with this camera. My old camera works fine, but with this camera, when I use this Ultra Plus SanDisk card, the camera will shut down. It'll just stop and it'll say recovering files and write them to disk. And I, I don't know until I look up at the screen. Like, I don't even know if I look up at the screen that it stopped unless I actually see it out of the corner of my eye flash a message up. Something's beeping. Unless I see something, a message flash up uh, on the screen that, uh, that there's a problem. I, so I, I've stopped and it only does it in my, uh, my newer camera, my AX53, my AX33, it works fine. So I went and I put a, a different brand. I actually put a Lexar micro SD in an adapter. This is the card, obviously, but I'm just using this for illustrative purposes. And it's a, this one's, this one's a class, uh, what is this one? This is a uh, class 10 um, H or UHS one. I believe this one here is the one I'm using now is a UHS three. But that's not the, that's not the issue. The issue is when I take the card, I have a, a a reader. I'll show you the reader I'm using. So here's the dilemma. When I copy the files to my computer, I use this little insignia. It's a USB three reader, and it is fast, and it will support SD, micro SD and compact flash. I bought this one because I still use compact flash for some things. Most stuff I use just SD cards. If I put the micro, a regular SD card in and read it, say I have a 10 gigs, my average video that I shoot, average 30 minute video, might have 14 or 15 gigs in files. Because I, I shoot at high, high bandwidth, uh, 60p for my video. And um, it might take, plugging in this card into here, it might take eight minutes to copy the files. Same files, micro SD, in the micro SD adapter, because obviously I have to use it in this in my camera anyway, and I know that it works. Plug it in here, it doesn't take eight minutes to copy, it takes 40 minutes to copy. Take the same card, take it out of the adapter, plug it into there, it takes eight minutes. So for all you rocket scientists out there, tell me why that is true. Why does it take eight minutes to copy the same files when it's plugged directly in to the card slot? And if I take the card and I put it into the adapter and plug it into there, it copies so much slower. Yet I don't have that problem if I'm copying the same number of files from a full-size SD card. That's my question to my loyal viewers. Somebody out there has to know the answer as to why this happens. And it doesn't just happen with this one. I had another uh, USB card reader before that had SD, uh, it had uh, compact flash, it had memory stick, and it also had, uh, what was the other one that Minolta used to use, or, or uh, Olympus? Uh, smart media or whatever or whatever their, their card was it did like five different types of cards it did it did uh, memory stick m micro memory stick SD but did not do micro SD it had to it had to put it into an adapter and I used to take my micro SD cards from my like my action cameras and I used to put them into a little separate USB one that I just plugged into the front of the computer because it was faster too whatever it is putting the cards into these adapters doesn't seem to affect the write speed because I can write at 100 megabits recording 4K. I can write 100 megabits per second, but reading them in 
two different adapters has been brutally slow. If somebody knows the answer to this, I'd love to hear about it. Please post. Now let's get on with today's video. So this is an ozone generator. A buddy of mine brought this to me a few years ago and I fixed it for him. And he says it's acting up again. He thinks it's a connection because he can go and it starts working. So he wants me to have a look at it and says, you know, you can disable this timer and just make it on off if that'll solve the problem with the timer. So we may end up just doing that. I may end up just putting a switch on the side and say, here, flick it on and turn it off because he doesn't care about the timer. But he says it, uh, it stops working. Now, of course, what this does is it this generates ozone gas and then he, uh, I guess he puts it into his sink with a little air stone to uh, put ozone into vegetables and stuff that he's washing and it's supposed to kill the bacteria and so forth on it because you know ozone of course being a uh, a disinfectant and I plug it in and nothing okay now it works you see oh there there we go now you can really smell it I think it might be his air pump actually. Oh, now it's gone off. Okay, so inside here somewhere, there must be a loose connection. So let's, uh, oh, it stinks in here now. Jeez, I just poisoned myself. Uh, the amount of ozone this thing puts out, it's, it's incredible. I looked at this one back in 2017. It was a, well, there was no solder on the dropper capacitor for the microcontroller. Traditional. That one, is that number one or number two? That one will fit. Looking for a traditional screwdriver that'll fit in here. Okay, let's get this thing apart. So there's screws hidden under these plugs, obviously. Okay, so there it is there. It just uses like a standard little aquarium pump. Uh, there's got to be something, a connection on here somewhere because it's losing power. So let's pull the circuit board out and see what is wrong. This is obviously the, the high voltage generator here for the, uh, the ozone generation. So how these things operate is you use an oscillator, a little flyback transformer. And they generate a high voltage and draw a corona in this chamber. Pump air through, the corona generates ozone, and the ozone's passed out the outside, to the outside through this other hose here. You can tell, look at the discoloration, that's just the, the chemical reaction between the ozone and the rubber tubing. But uh, this is going to be okay, our problem is going to be on this board here. So let's pop the little circuit board out, well I'll do this connector here first. One's for the ozone generator and the other one is for the, the pump, so we'll just keep them separate. The pump is that one. They probably are the same anyway, but let's take a look at the oh, I'll do this plug here as well for the control panel and open up the circuit board and see what is the problem. I forget what trouble we had with this before. But let's just see if we can spot any connections on here because it's certainly from the way it's behaving when you can tap it it certainly is uh, indicating that there's a connection that's at fault it could be on this other board though because this is just the driver board it might be on this one here yeah okay uh, I've never been into this obviously they've got that shielding there to protect the IC from the high voltage generated in the uh, ozone generator so they've got a little strap of metal here a little strip of foil and they've grounded it to uh, protect the circuitry and the controller from an electrostatic discharge from the, uh, the, the high voltage generator so this should just lift off here which it does okay let's just take a look at oh it's even got an infrared remote control look at that 
We'll take this little circuit board off. Take this this uh, plastic off the board. I just want to basically inspect all these connections on here and look for any connections that may be failing and uh, resolder any if we see any because I'm sure that that's where our problem is going to be is it's going to be a connection because of how you can just tap the thing or a separate trace on the board or something. So let me get a close up look at this board and we'll go over both of these boards and see where the problem is. So this is the display here. Um, and our, our control header is fed off of these pins over here. So I'm going to redo, I'm going to resolder the connections here that go through over to this control IC. Because you can see this is directly driving the uh, driver board. And then we'll do the same on the driver board. But I'm just going to redo these connections on here. We'll, we'll throw some flux on and uh, redo this IC do all the connections on here and uh, then do the same. We'll check the other board out. So let me get some flux. I'll also redo the, the connections down here on the plug. These connections don't look to be too swift. Right there. Looks like there's a few cold connections on this board. shield it has to be like that we'll throw some tape on top of that to hold it in place Okay, let's look at the uh, the other board here. We're going to uh, redo the connections on here, especially the ones around the power pins here and the the uh, connector because and there's a couple transistors in here as well that control these control the output power. Are you these transistors? Or I guess these are not transistors. They're probably S STRs or Triax. They're probably Triax. BT1 and BT2. What's the number on them? BT-134, what is that, a triac? I think it's a triac. Yes, BT-134 is a triac. It's just used to switch the AC power on and off to the two different devices. These, these operate directly on AC. Our AC power comes in. As you can see, the AC power here, the neutral, what's that? That's okay. Neutral comes in and it's connected directly to the two neutrals here. The uh, line is switched between, is switched through these two triacs, and of course the line side over here, line goes in through this current limiting resistor, this big one here, which is then applied over here to the main terminal one of the triac and main terminal one of the other triac, main terminal two, which is the output goes to the respective switched, and then these ones here, these are the gates. The gates are what is triggered from the controller. So we're going to resolder these connections and uh, 
hopefully that will put this problem to bed and I don't have to listen to my buddy complain that his vegetable washer is not working. There's a capacitor dropper on here as well, which is what this is. This capacitor dropper is just to provide low voltage for the uh, other circuitry buzzer. What is wrong with my iron? It doesn't seem like it's hot enough today. It is set for 700 degrees Fahrenheit. There's that beeping again. What is beeping in here? Is it my soldering iron that's beeping? Let me do this plug, this one here. They all look to be bad on here. Every one of them. This is probably where the fault is, right here. Because all these pins look bad. Every single one. Looks flaky. Just under my cheap magnifying glasses. I don't know whether my iron is cold or what, but it just, well, that solder melts fine when I melt solder, but geez, the stuff on the board is just terrible. Either that or they just have really bad solder on here. This just stuff doesn't flow very well at all. I mean, when I melt solder, it melts like you know flows like crazy but on the board here it just this stuff is just crap this has got to be that lead free crap that's on here why is my camera out of focus come on camera you can do better than that I'm not zoomed in that close I hate lead free solder I think everybody does it's just crap Okay, that looks a little bit better than before. Resistor, we'll just make sure this one's good. Okay, let's put this back into the case and uh, see whether this thing will do anything. No. Just kidding. I'm going to pull a big clive on you there, but. Or an electro boom. Okay, power. I think I got it. I think. I, oh, yes. Oh yeah, it's it's producing. It's producing lots of ozone. It's starting to get kind of stinky in here now. And the timer's working. See with the timer on this thing, you can set it up to 60 minutes. Thirty, fifteen, ten, and five. And then of course, turn it off. I guess it has to wait for the whole five minutes to roll, run down here.
let it run down and shut off in five minutes. Okay, it's now counted down to zero. We'll see how long it takes to shut off. I think it's probably going to shut off within a few seconds. While I sanitize my bench. There you go. Shuts off. Everything's working. Excellent. Turn it back on. Yep. Okay, we're good. We'll just unplug it now. Um, yeah, it's good to go. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.